The United States may be on the path to its third presidential impeachment. There's now a tentative agreement for a whistleblower to testify before the House Intelligence Committee about President Trump's controversial call with the Ukrainian president. John Lawrence has more. President Trump sounding off Sunday night, tweeting he wants to meet the whistleblower who represented a perfect conversation with a foreign leader in a totally inaccurate and fraudulent way. What's going on now is the single greatest scam in the history of American politics. Democrats disagree, saying the president took advantage of his power to solicit interference from Ukraine in the 2020 election. This is serious evidence of wrongdoing. The president has betrayed his oath of office. A rough transcript from the White House shows President Trump repeatedly urged Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky to look into Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter. The president did nothing in this phone call that's impeachable. Trump denies any wrongdoing, and critics of the coming impeachment inquiry say this is a bit like deja vu all over again following special counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. Democrats leading the probe disagree. After the last two years that we've been through, the president well understood uh, that it was illegal to seek foreign assistance uh, in a campaign. Uh, and immediately after Mueller testified, that is exactly what he was back at doing again. And the White House will soon find out if that is impeachable conduct. I'm John Lawrence reporting. On to our crime coverage this morning, we're taking a look at several local arrests over the weekend. Fox 14's Anna McAllister has been looking through arrest reports. Anna, what did you find? Randy, it looks like it was a busy weekend for law enforcement across the area, with crimes ranging from alleged domestic battery to planned arson. Friday night, Washtenaw Parish Sheriff's deputies arrested a Monroe man after he threatened to burn down a local business. Deputies say this man, Patrick Anderson, was spewing threats at the owners of Mel's Towing and threatened to set fire to the company after there were issues with his bill. Authorities attempted to remove Anderson. He resisted. Anderson is charged with resisting an officer and false information of planned arson. And early Sunday morning, a Washita Parish Sheriff's deputy responded to a call in reference to a physical disturbance. When they arrived at the residence, the deputy re uh, learned that the suspect, Ryan Caldwell, hadn't left. Caldwell was located driving on Highway 151 when he was pulled over, arrested on a traffic warrant, and brought back to the residence. The victim, who identified herself as Caldwell's girlfriend, said Caldwell manhandled her and she had scratches on her arms. There were two children at the residence at the time of the altercation. The victim's 12-year-old son told police he saw Caldwell hit his mom in the face, grab her hair, and push her to the ground. Caldwell was transported to Washtenaw Correctional Center and is charged with domestic battery and child endangerment. And Monroe police officers responded to calls about a domestic disturbance Sunday morning. The victim claims when she came home from work, Tyrone Lacey was at the residence with children and had been drinking. She says Lacey asked her to have sex with him and she said no. When she laid on the couch, she said Lacey laid on top of her and asked her again to have sex with him and she pushed him off of her and she told him to leave. The victim told police Lacey then grabbed her by the neck pushed her into the TV and ran out the back door. He then returned to the residence banging on that back door. Lacey was arrested and charged with domestic abuse battery. All right, Anna, thank you. Dozens of people gathered for the Elaine Massacre Memorial dedication in Helena, Arkansas, Sunday. Today is the century anniversary of the massacre of more than 200 African American sharecroppers by a white mob in 1919. According to the state archives, another 200 were jailed and tortured in the attacks. What this monument says to us is, is that we can start looking at our background or looking at our past realistically, look at it and hopefully put a lot of our anger, a lot of our distrust, a lot of our um, nasty emotions to bed. The memorial reading dedicated to those known and unknown who lost their lives in the Elaine Massacre. It is located across from the courthouse where black men were prosecuted for the massacre. The actual massacre took place in neighboring Elaine. Some critics said that memorial should be there. Two Louisiana hospitals are getting together for a possible merger. Friday, a non-binding agreement went into effect between the Lafayette General Hospital and the Oshner Health System. Now, this merger would create the biggest health system in the Gulf South. Officials say the aim is to enhance and expand services across the region. Lafayette General will serve as the regional hub as per the agreement, and employees there can expect at least a $2 raise. Oshner says it will invest $365 million over the next 10 years. Final approvals on the merger are expected for spring. 
Sterlington is seeing some financial progress, and that's all thanks to a fiscal administrator. The administrator telling our partners at the News Star they have a plan in place for 17 of the $21 million debt. Sterlington has considered many options to help settle that debt, from a sales tax to signage at the ballpark to sewer rate increases. In August, the Board of Aldermen voted to raise the sewer rates to $48, and now they're looking at yet another increase, which would bring the rate to $68. Mayor Cesar Velasquez says there are many other cost-saving measures they are working on, but for now, he says the sales tax is not in the near future. The Blue Star Mothers of Northeast Louisiana celebrated families whose children paid the ultimate sacrifice in a ceremony yesterday. The last Sunday of September is recognized nationally as Gold Star Mothers Day. Gold Star parents are those who lost their children while they were actively serving in the line of duty. 43 Gold Star families were recognized right here in Northeast Louisiana. Not only to remember these great Americans, but you honor them. You honor them by standing up. We know is right and righteous and morally and ethically the right thing to do. The loss of a child is hard, and I don't think anybody can understand it fully unless you've done it yourself. Gold Star Mother's Day was incorporated in 1929 by the U.S. Congress. Coming up next on Fox 14, visitors flock to Louisiana truck stop after the strangest of stories. Have a woman bites a camel. Many folks want to see the victim with their own eyes, but first, here is Lexi with a look at your commute path. And after hitting the roads this morning, road conditions are looking very good weather-wise. We're not going to be seeing too much rain activity for today because we are.